Hey everyone, it's Nick with Us vs. Herd, and tomorrow we are in for a wild, wild ride. I mean, it's been a, last week was crazy, yesterday was crazy, today has been kind of flat. I think we're all kind of waiting for what the Fed is going to do. I'm going to go over the charts here in a minute, but let's look at what is coming ahead here. And tomorrow at 2 p.m., all these are Eastern times here, 2 p.m. Eastern they are going to make a, a statement on the rate on the rate the, the rates will be released and at 2:30 p.m. Eastern time Powell's going to come out and give a news conference. So this could go either way. We have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. But you may want to just be careful of any positions that you have open. I'm not telling you to trade or not trade or anything like that, but I am saying just be careful mind what your positions are you i mean we're, we're expect to have heavy volatility tomorrow you know if they raise rates not raise rates if they do it to 75 to 50 just just be i'm just saying be careful maybe scale back and and, and relax let the market play out and once the market chooses a direction hammer into that right okay so what like what is the expectation going into tomorrow? Now the biggest the biggest issue which this has come out CPI data came out and we were talking about this last week where it went from 8.3 to 8.6. We had a bad read because for all this time they've been saying, hey, we're at the top, we're at the top, we're gonna start cooling off, but instead inflation continues to go higher. Inflation goes continues to go higher. So every time they've been doing a a, a 50 basis basis point rate increase right now the fed is actually chasing inflation instead of just hammering it down well we've been saying that we've been saying this for a long time why don't they just do like 100 150 kind of smash this thing to oblivion but no they're too scared of the stock market what's going to do you know what high inflation is going to kill everything and it's going to take many 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 years to recover so you know, for me, I would rather just get it over and done with rather than drag this out. Because as you can see, they're doing these 50 basis point increases is only prolonging what is inevitable. And now they're going to come out, you know, they said, you know, they're likely to do three quarters. So 75 basis point increase possibly tomorrow. We don't know what exactly is going to happen, but it's highly possible we're going to get a 50 base, uh, 75 basis points tomorrow. Now, meanwhile, we're having, you know, hiring freezes. We're, have, we're having companies starting to lay off today. Redfin came out and said, hey, we're going to lay people off. Compass also said they're going to lay off 10% to cut its uh, to, uh, Compass is going to cut its workforce by 10%. Redfin's going to be at 8%. Mortgage rates have gone from 3.9 in January to 6.38% now. Home sales have been dropping for several straight months. And the fall is expected to worsen. Redfin, if you want to look it up, Redfin actually put out a press release to say that demand, you can, I'm not going to, I'm just going to cover the, the highlighted points here. They're saying demand is off by 17%. They said we wouldn't lay people off unless we had to. We have to. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's bad. It's bad. All these companies are for, for, forecasting tech companies are laying people off left and right. If they aren't hiring people, they are in a hiring freeze. Now, going into some of these charts for tomorrow, let's pull up the S and P right here. I'll just pull up. I'll just pull up Spy. Okay. I mean, we're just today. We're just kind of chopping around here. You know, who knows to say the market's still open, but this is ugly, ugly, ugly. People thought we were going to go up from here. Sure, we had a nice, you know, eight, six to eight day consolidation here, but now we just cratered on that CPI data. So my my thinking is 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 if we expect the seventy five basis points. And we look to that as good that Powell is starting to get a little bit more aggressive to battle inflation. I feel like that could be bullish. Like I think what traders and investors are waiting for is for the Fed to get more aggressive. And if they pull that, what you want to call like nuclear option, right? 75, 100, 150, it may be bullish for the market because the Fed is actually now dealing with it instead of like, you know, they did 25 points and they were doing 50 points and now and now they're at 75. If 75 is not enough, they're gonna have to do 100, 125. I mean, we just, we at this point, you have to get inflation under control. So SPY right now, looking at it here, I mean, this thing was consolidating at like 410, peaking between 410, 415. Now it's 373, hit a new low today actually. 
And if we pull, if we pull up, let's go to the five-year chart here. I mean, we're we're a long way off for, in terms of spy for COVID lows. Like the COVID lows were at 218, we're at 373. But I mean, as you can see here, this is this is ugly, ugly. And the what was propping this up? One of the major issues here was that instead of cutting off the stimulus when the market recovered, the the Fed kept pushing, you know, QE for all of 2020, 2021, all of 2021. It just kept pushing it. And all this buying created a euphoria, a frenzy. And look, we are paying for it now with layoffs. And the Fed just, just stopped printing so much money, stopped trying to support the markets when we already recovered. But they kept they kept going. Not only did they recover in 2020, we recovered all that we lost. We went positive on the year in 2020. But they kept supporting the market all of 2021 when it didn't need to be. There was, you know, practically no dips, no dips. And now we are facing, you know, we're not there yet, but this potentially could be a crisis. If we look at the queues, same exact situation. Now we're, we're a bit, we're a bit away off from the lows here at 163. We're about hundred points off the 2020 lows, but I mean, this, this chart, this chart is broken. Again, we're, we're, we're tapping some new lows today and you know, I, I think I think all of this could have been avoided had they been more aggressive. Instead, they 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 just the Fed the Fed believed that that inflation wasn't going to stay, and now inflation is out of control. So, what at what point do these people start doing their jobs? When it hits ten percent, twelve percent, fifteen percent? I mean, we're starting to see. Obviously, we're starting to see energy uh, pop off, food. I mean, everything is going up way higher than the eight or eight to nine percent we're paying. Ten to 30%, maybe 50% more, you know, than we were a month ago, two months ago, definitely more than a year ago. And now with the layoffs, people are starting to potentially lose their jobs. So how are you going to support those home prices? And, you know, if we go back, if we go back into the, you know, the Redfin layoffs here, you know, basically, you know, they're, they're, they're looking, um, basically for a, a multi-year, not just a month to month thing. Like they're not, this is, they're saying this is going to be, you could read this whole thing, but they're going to say this is going to last multiple years, not just a few months. And they're starting to align their businesses. I mean, crypto, crypto, those companies are all laying people off. Now that doesn't really have much to do with the housing crisis, but layoffs are happening now. So what can we do to prepare? Just be careful, be mindful about your positions because we don't know what the future is, but we do know we just got to kind of stack some cash prepare for inflation, make, make, find some good opportunities in the market and, you know, try to survive. If you watch this video, then let me know as always stay safe, stay green. It's us first heard.